Mm -hmm. You can see the burgundy and the mm -hmm. purple colors mm -hmm. that I used for the very, very first washes, mm -hmm. and you can see where I thinned it out quite a bit yeah. to where you can see the palette through it. Yeah. But once again, the, the beauty of acrylics is that you can take time and build that up. Mm -hmm. And like, if you don't, if it doesn't look the way that you want it to look, just let it dry for a few minutes and go back in and put another wash over it. You know, using your brain and thinking, of course, you know, okay, I need to put a little vermilion or a different kind of red or whatever you're working with. If it's not working out for you, just let it dry, put another layer in, and it eventually builds up. And I have, I, as I was putting the colors next to each other, I took a, you saw me rinse my brush and go in and take just water and kind of blend it in there a little bit and that also picks up some excess pigment and, and allows the underpainting to show through a little bit more as well. Showing through, do I want that or do I want to eventually completely cover that up? Well in some cases you might want that underpainting to show through. What you're saying is as you start going around, you'll find the values of the colors that you put on. You may have to intensify some as you as you go from what you have right now. Exactly. When you get the balance of the other colors in there. Exactly. So there you have it. The next thing that I do is I take my Mr. Brush here and I go into my cleaning fluid and I pull it back. Pull it towards you or towards the ferrule so that you're not going against the grain of the fibers of the brush. And that will get the cleaning material inside and it will start pulling the excess pigment out of the brush. And when I when I rinse, I'm pulling I'm pulling against the glass and I'm pulling upwards. I never I try to never smash my brush against the bottom. And it's just like any other tool, you want to clean and condition every time. And you can't let acrylic set in there. You, you, it'll just, they'll never be the same. In this case, I've been using washes, so there's not a lot of pigment in the brush. So this is an easy cleanup. Oftentimes, after a day of painting, when I'm doing this, I can do this for five minutes and still be pulling pigment out. And then the very last thing I do just put a blob of this because this is brush cleaner and conditioner. Bring your brush to a point and then uh, I have, you know, jars, stick my brush in there and let it dry and it will bring, hopefully bring all your hairs up. Now this being not an expensive brush, just, the, I mean this was pretty much a brand new brush that I bought last week. I can already see the end bending. So what, what that tells me is that I'm not, I need to rotate my brush a little bit more while I'm painting so that the pressure that you're putting on the end of it is evenly distributed and hopefully you won't get like a curve going like that. This stuff helps quite a bit. And you can do this, there are some dish soaps, I, I don't really recommend dish soaps, you can, but you can use liquid dish soap, the ones that don't have like um, ammonia in that in them, I think if there's like a Dove, the, the, the bar soap Dove, I think has no like extra chemicals in it, it's pretty much just really, and it's got lanolin, so you can use a bar of Dove, I think it's Dove, um, the same way, just wet it and get it all mushy like this, and then the conditioner, the lanolin in the in the bar soap, will condition oh. the hairs. So you're actually leaving a little of that I conditioner am. in the brush I to, am. to dry once you got it all reshaped. Yeah, and then when I sit down for the next painting session, you just rinse it out. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I do is rinse out the brushes. Um, I, I use that pink soap. The pink soap the is good. That yeah, that's got a lot of lanolin in it. That mm -hmm. stuff's really good. That stuff's good conditioner. Yeah. I've had brushes that are like four or five years old and they're still good. I don't, I didn't, I don't think I brought any of my oldies but goodies, but I have brushes that are 10 years old. Some of my old Series 7s, 
Now the ones that, because they're, it's hard for me to get Series 7s that are in any good shape, um, I'm replacing them with uh, Raphael, there's Raphael, Da Vinci, and then um, Those are good brushes. if I can get the um, Vallejo brushes, I like the Vallejo Sables, and they're made by a company called Escoda, and this is a, a Escoda brush, so essentially this is a similar brush to the Vallejo brushes. Uh, I'll, get you, uh, I'll get you a website. I bought some the Vallejo uh, brush sets with pretty brushes in it, and they work real nice and not expensive. They're, they're very so good brushes. $16, yep. $20 for big brushes. If you take care of them and condition them, this is like the hardest thing for me is getting these things on. <laughs> uh, that is always a problem.